sources for Martin of Public Welfare, Evangelist Lester Roloff and the Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises Incorporated, operators of six homes for people in trouble, were told by the court they would have to obtain a license from the state in order to continue these ministries of reaching wayward boys and girls for Christ. Believing that licensure means control and headship over God-ordained ministries, Brother Roloff gave an emphatic no, and the battle of separation of church and state was underway. The decision was made to stand, stand firm against the state coming in and taking over the homes while removing the girls and boys to state-operated juvenile shelters and penal institutions. In less than four days, preachers began arriving in Corpus Christi saying they were determined to stand, stand with God and obey Him rather than an unrighteous law passed by man. On June 18, 1979, a rally was held at the People's Baptist Church with more than 3,000 in attendance. The Christian Alamo was now under siege and for one week, Four to six hundred preachers, along with hundreds of parents and friends, stood firm to protect the church against the unlawful encroachment of the state. We go now into the main auditorium of the People's Church, where Brother Roloff is pastor. Four times in the Bible, never did they mean more than now. The Holy Spirit said, put it in. Now, the just shall live Amen. I'm glad for the privilege of living by faith I care not today what tomorrow may bring I know Jesus you, my precious friends, that in your hands almost rests the destiny. There's only one power greater than the news media, and that's the power of God. In this audience tonight, packed and jammed in this auditorium, is the salt of the earth Amen. and the light of the world. Amen. I'm wondering tonight as we begin this service after more than six years of solid battle. And may I remind you, I did not start the fight. I was not a public figure. You don't bring a public figure out of the cow pen. <laughs> And a lot of the public figure that they made out of me, I did not enjoy. But I'd like to remind the news media, you'll give an account to the same God I'll give an account. Amen. Amen. And how well I found out what I said to Mimi Crosley and to the other reporter that came. I said, are you a Christian? And they said, no. I said, then you'll never be able to understand what we're doing. So I put the news media on guard tonight. Unless you know Jesus, you can't understand what he's doing around here. Our Lord will return to this earth one of these days. Our Lord will
you're visiting with us, uh, we may make um, a little racket, but it won't hurt you. Uh, we don't have one pistol in the auditorium unless the devil's crowd brought it. Our guard at the gate doesn't have a sign of a pistol, but we do have the sword. And this is what the battle's all about. Let's just sing Get the News. All right, all right. Raise it up when it comes time. Get the news. recognize tonight uh, the preachers that are here. I'd like for every preacher in the auditorium, pastor, evangelist, I'd like you to stand. I'd like to get a good picture of all of you. If you stand to your feet quickly, all the preachers. There's something wonderful happening in America that the average citizen knows nothing about. And that something wonderful is not being shown to the press, the television cameras, but there's a great move of God going on in this country that most people know little or nothing about. I've been a fundamentalist for a long time. I've been on the fundamental scene for a long time. I can recall when our buildings or storefront buildings brush arbors, tents, or maybe in the basement or an attic of a rented building. But something wonderful has happened. The fundamental churches are now the largest in most of the cities of our country. There was a day when the fundamental church had a choir that was compo composed of two old codgers and three draft dodgers, ling ding ling, some little ditty. But now our choirs sing proper music, and they sing well. There was a day when fundamentalist preachers used to split their infinitives and hang their gerunds and dangle their participles, but now fundamental preachers seem to use good grammar. We have our schools. We have our nice buildings. We have our, our large church plants. Fundamentalists, in a sense, are living on Main Street today. I can recall when you couldn't find a fundamental preacher whose socks matched his tie, and it was rather difficult to find one whose socks matched each other. But something wonderful is happening today. Do you know that fundamentalists have stood in our standing to the extent that if the largest church at this moment in the state of, this, of, of, of Florida is an independent Baptist church? Did you know that same thing could be said about South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia, Maine, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Missouri, and other states. There's something wonderful going on. And what's happening is this. Great soul-winning churches are being built. And these great soul-winning churches are building wonderful Christian schools who stand for that which is right. And now instead of being pushed back in a corner, a man who stands for God and for the Bible and for the faith once for all delivered to the saints and for the old time fundamental position and the old time religion is no longer alone. He has others to stand beside him and to stand with him. I was reading in a big New York City newspaper recently a man who was not a Christian said that the largest most powerful influence politically by any religious body in America today is the independent fundamental group. Now, what's happened? God's people have stood. God's men have stood. Giants have risen. Giants like 
Lester Olaf, the man who has stood alone, if need be, but he stood. He stood for right, for what he thought was right. He's been in the forefront of the battle. And across this land, there are thousands and thousands of men who are standing, perhaps not in the limelight such as is our brother Olaf, but men who in neighborhoods and cities and villages and towns and hamlets and countrysides all across this land are standing. They'd rather be right than popular. They'd rather be right than accepted. They'd rather be right than accredited. They'd rather be right with God than be applauded by the world arrangement. And thank God for these soldiers who are standing. And thank God that there are those who lead us who through these years have given us the example of standing. I think of the Christian Law Association. I think of David Gibbs, the attorney, and his co-workers. I think of the nearly three schools, fundamental Christian schools a day being started in this country. I think of these preacher boys coming from these new colleges and these older colleges that are standing for the faith going up and down the length and breadth of this nation building great soul-winning churches and going house to house and knocking on doors and bringing back the old-time gospel to our country. You see, something was lost many, many generations ago that has been rediscovered. And that rediscovery is that God's people are supposed to do the work. It's not a priest standing behind a pulpit or a preacher uh, performing behind a pulpit to some spectators, but it's a man of God who says... I'm doing it, and this is the way to do it, and you join me in doing it. And across this land, a great crowd of people are scattered abroad everywhere preaching and teaching the Word of God. And they're standing. They're standing because they have convictions. They're also standing because it can be said of Evangelist Lester Roloff, my good friend of almost a third of a century. He stood.